Hey, I'm Frost Drive, and I'm gonna teach you how to put sound in the Clip Paint Studio. Let's go. Frost Drive! So you wanna hit File, New. Make sure you do animation. Hit OK. So the file starts off as white, but you don't want to blind yourself. So you're gonna want to change that to like something in the middle, value-wise. Put it to gray, but don't don't make it dead gray, cause that's kind of boring. You could put a little splash of color in there. You know what I'm saying? Now here's the part you've been waiting for. I know I'm getting into it real fast. You go to File, Import Sound, Audio. My bad. So then you find your audio. I got a clip here of my friend from our drawing show. <laughs> And then immediately bores people. Bro, that was death. mad funny. And just like that, it's in the file. Boom, we could just hit play on the timeline. Bro, that was mad funny, dog. All right, and if you're playing your audio but you don't hear anything, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do to fix that is go to animation, playback settings, play in real time. Make sure that's checked. By the way, if you don't see a timeline, like I don't see a timeline right here, all you have to do is go to window, timeline. Side note, if you have trouble with it cutting off the audio, try using different sound file types. Uh, I was originally MP3, it was cutting off. Try to wave, works. Part two, properties. So you can grab it right here at this thing and move it around. And if you need to cut off the beginning, let's say. Mad funny dog. That's how you do it. So to edit the volume of it, make sure you're on the object tool. Then right here, volume is just the same interface as brushes. How cool is that? And, and you can change the start time apparently too. Oh, and that scoots it. I think that's easier to just do on the timeline. So right there, that is a keyframe. So so let's say I needed it to be loud and then quiet. That's a keyframe for 100. I can go right here, make it 30. Let's go over here, make it low again, and then back up to 100. So let's see how that sounds. Bro, that's mad funny, dog. Let's make it let's make it more extreme so I can really hear it. Go all the way to zero. Bro, that's funny, dog. Okay, yeah. So that's working. Pretty cool. So if you have keyframes and you want to delete them, you just right click, delete all keyframes, boom. Or let's say you just want to delete one keyframe, all you gotta do is go to it, you know, click up here in this area, that'll take you to different frames, take your marker around, just hit like right there, and then over here where you had the keyframe, it's right there, just click, and boom, that one is gone. So right here I got two keyframes now. Uh, it starts at 100 and then over here it's zero, and in between them it's just gonna go at like a constant rate of quieting down but if you want to change that let's say you want it to like get quite fast but then like fade out slowly all you got to do is go right here to the graph editor would you look at that there's our two points and see actually I was wrong actually it starts off a little slow and then whoop, goes fast and slow again that's how organic stuff moves if you wanted to like say we're doing visuals this works the same for visuals if you want something to look robotic you make it go at a constant rate like that. And by the way, how I did that was I just grabbed the handles right here and then you can spin it around. So like right here, what, what would happen is because it's at 100 on the left and zero on the end. So it would go quiet really fast. And then actually, because I made it so severe, it will get, you'll hear it get louder again and then it'll go back to zero. I don't know how often I'd use that for audio, but for tweening, like visual stuff, this is super helpful. Definitely learn it. Even in video editing, you use the smoothing out interpolation like all the time. Let me do it right here on screen. And with motion blur, oh my God, it looks good. Seriously, just get used to doing that if you animate a lot or do video editing. All right, and then we can just go ahead and start animating. So I'm going to use this clip and make it a meme for everybody. I'm going to put a green screen so you can put it on your own videos. <laughs> All right, and I also have a few other tips about sound, especially when you're doing videos. Here's a fact. The most important thing about video is actually not going to be your animation. It is going to be the sound quality. So if you're recording with your own voice, get an actual good mic. No one's going to listen to your $10 gamer headset. Second tip is with music and videos, you want to be safe. It's better to have your music too quiet than have it too loud. If your music is too loud, that just ruins your whole entire video. I've seen it hundreds of times and I've clicked off videos hundreds of times. Keep your music quiet. And just a couple tips with animation, there's a playlist on YouTube where this guy made a really cool animated tutorial it's called the 12 principles of animation and they're super short. You can pretty much watch them before every single time you animate and it will help a ton. With animating, planning is everything. So just study, plan your stuff out, do it good, do all the 12 principles and you have cool animation. So once you're done, you got to export animation, 
uh, movie will export the sound. And it's so simple, you just go blah, 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 and then just push okay. That's awesome. Make sure you have a frame rate that you lack. I do 15 because most monitors and videos will do 30 FPS only. 15 is a multiple of 30, so it still works. If you did 24, sometimes that makes things wonky with monitors and the refresh rates. It's more safe to go with a multiple of 30 because 30 works on everything. All right, thanks for watching this video, everybody. Peace out. Bro, that's mad funny, dog.